I have come to this system for milling two-sided guitar necks after many failures. I have ripped failed parts off the spoil board and thrown them across the shop on many occasions. And the fruit of these many frustrating events are as follows. I've done this before a few times here on the Yield channel, but it was usually an afterthought or a short segment. I thought it'd be useful to have a video detailing the entire process. The first thing you're gonna need is a technical drawing. I have skipped this step and paid for it on many occasions. Not only will it save your lazy butt from a bunch of trips back to the PC to check where you've set the origin on sequential milling operations, it will make the process a lot more enjoyable. I also like to include the stock setup in my drawings and have a copy with me while thicknessing and joining the stock. I use the stock itself to reference the datum and index the origin for milling operations. So having accurately thicknessed and joined stock on the CNC is essential. I have thicknessed and joined one edge of the stock to the specification of the drawing. I have also attached a piece of scrap MDF to the spoil board and cut an edge on it with the machine. So I know when using this edge to attach stock, it's as close to parallel on the machine as I can achieve. To attach your stock to the spoil board with this method, you'll need these items. The only one that's not obvious is my trusty little piece of maple that I use as a burnisher. When you burnish the tape into the parts, it holds extremely well. I index the origin of the part using the stock material. I like to do this indexing with a one half inch bit. And I find that the larger diameter of the bit makes it easier to accurately touch off the edge. Change to the first bit that I will use to cut the truss rod slot and to set the Z axis depth. This cut will need to be very accurate to the top surface, so I'll indicate off the top of the part. The feel you use when applying pressure to the paper while indexing the Z-axis is very similar to the way you use a micrometer, you know, the old style ones without the ratchet. I have found that a series of sanity checks will often save you from destroying a part. First I set the X and Y to zero with the MDI, and I check that the bit is in correct alignment with the stock. Next, I like to jog around the stock and make sure everything is where it should be, and all the cut lines will be inside the perimeter of the stock. Finally, I check that the spindle is starting and stopping when it should. It's finally time to hit start cycle run and cut this thing. But hold on just a second. Before you start, set your feed rate down to 50% or 70%. This will give you a chance to stop the machine if something's wrong before it goes too far. When cutting a truss rod slot, it's always a good idea to have it there for a quick test fit. This one gets me all the time. After you do a tool change, verify that you have put in and zeroed the correct bit. I got this one all set up, but I noticed that it was a scallop tool path and not the boring operation that I was anticipating. So let's try that again, this time with the right tool, the three quarter inch ball nose tool, like the code called.
I've ruined more than my fair share of parts because I thought I could get away without support material. Even though it's a very thin piece for this particular neck, it's worth the time to make something to support this material that will be overhanging during the profile cut. Now this is the tricky bit. I flip the part so that the same edge is indexed as the first operation. This way I don't have to have so much precision in the width of the stock. I index the back cut from the same edges as the top cuts and this keeps my tolerance stack as low as possible. The same milled MDF edge keeps the part true to the x-axis of my machine, and the part comes out perfect. After the outline is cut, my datum that I index the X and Y from is no longer there. I mark the spoil board with the bit, just in case there's a problem, so I'll be able to get back into the correct position. It's not ideal, and you would be adding to the tolerance stack if you have to reset the accesses, but it's better than starting over again. It wasn't necessary in this case, but it's always good to have a backup plan. the truss rod slot ended up exactly in the center of the neck, just the way I planned. Once again, I'm sure there's a better way to accomplish this. For a small shop like mine, making one-off custom parts, the accuracy of the system is satisfying. Thanks for watching.